the PlayStation Showcase has come and went, and I think for the majority of people, the highlight was God of War Ragnarok. A lot of people are very excited about it. You'll be able to play it on the PlayStation 4. You can play it on the PlayStation 5. And we got a full gameplay trailer and a lot of new information. And I want to talk a little bit about the new information that has come out. Let's go over the top eight things we now know about God of War Ragnarok. Number one, the game started development in 2018 after the conclusion of the original God of War. Of course, the game is being developed by Sony Santa Monica Studio. Those are the guys that have done the God of War game since its inception. And good to see they are going to be consistent and continue with God of War because I think that is their homegrown franchise but at the same time Santa Monica has done a pretty good job evolving with the God of War franchise with each entry so that's been pretty cool to see throughout the years. Number two while the last game built an enormous amount of trust and understanding between father and son there's still going to be this bit of complexity between the two characters. Yes if you compare the beginning of God of War 2018's Atreus and Kratos relationship to the end it's a night and day but it's not sunshine and rainbows even in God of War Ragnarok. In the PlayStation blog, it was noted, Atreus is desperately curious, like most young people, he wants to understand who he is more than anything. In this case, he wants to understand who he could be. The mystery of Loki's role in the upcoming conflict is something that Atreus cannot let go of. He wants to keep his family safe, but Atreus also doesn't want to stand by and do nothing while conflict consumes the Nine Realms. Kratos, obviously still bearing the knowledge of his past mistakes, wants to spare Atreus the bloody lessons he learned from his conflict with the gods. He wants to keep his son safe above all. And of course, their confrontation with Baldur has vindicated that more tragedy is to come. Together, Kratos and Atreus will have to make a choice about which path they will take. Whatever they choose will define the fate of all those living in the Nine Realms as Ragnarok approaches. That is directly from the PlayStation blog, kind of setting a general foundation for what to expect in the story. Number three, now, of course, in this game, it is going to feature a much, much bigger world. If you played the last game, you know there was a little bit of a tease. When you go through the different realms, there's only six available realms. But now in God of War Ragnarok, you will be able to visit all nine of the realms. That includes the unreachable Vanaheim, Svartalheim and Asgard as well. Unreachable in the first game, that is. On top of that, the six realms that were present in the first game those will be recreated in god of war ragnarok and they will be expanded upon even more so that means there is going to be a great deal of content in this one including new areas from locations featured in the last game so expect to spend quite a bit of time in this one Number four, it would not be God of War without your healthy serving of combat, and a little bit of it has to be a bit visceral. You've been able to see a hint of the new attack abilities, a new runic summon for Atreus, and of course, the return of Kratos' legendary weapons. Along with that, there's going to be a lot more that we have yet to see, but more stuff is going to be shown as we get closer to its release window. Number five, I think many of you would say that God of War lives and dies by a robust combat system, and something very interesting was noted in the PlayStation blog, noting, quote, As a team, we've worked hard to take our learnings from God of War 2018 and improve upon combat to feel fresh yet familiar. With God of War Ragnarok, one of our main goals was to push player choice in combat. Whether it's through hard-hitting combos, a mastery of elements, or clever defensive tactics, you will find plenty of opportunity to fight alongside the duo in a way that feels uniquely expressive. So, combat it's going to remain similar from a fundamental standpoint, but it looks like they're looking to expand upon it and add a little bit of diversity and player choice so you can tackle situations in different ways, which I am all for. That is going to add a layer of strategy as well. Number six, of course, combat is supposed to be utilized against enemies, and the enemies you saw in the first game are going to be present in God of War Ragnarok. However, it was noted the realms have grown harsher and a whole new host of creatures from Nor across Norse mythology will test your skills from the trailer. You can see what happens when Kratos finds himself under the hooves of the Stalker or grabbed between the jaws of the Drekki, and that's just the beginning. On top of that, there's going to be an expanded cast of adversaries for Kratos and Atreus to conquer. And one of the goals that was noted in the PlayStation blog is they want every encounter to feel somewhat memorable, even from the smallest brawls to all of the boss fights. Obviously, it's to be expected that the boss fights are going to be very memorable, but they want those small encounters to be relatively memorable as well. And of course, outside of the enemies that you are going to see throughout the game, you're going to have two main antagonists, and you can probably figure out who they're going to be. Of course, after the death of Baldur, Freya is going to be one of the main antagonists in the game. 
And while Freya is probably most known for her magic, at the same time, it is noted she's a formidable combat warrior in her own right. And also, after that, probably the big bad of the game, you're gonna have to deal with the wrath of Thor's legendary bloodlust after the loss of his sons and half-brother. Thor looks to be the main villain in the game, but we're still gonna have to wait and see how things play out. But of course, if you played God of War 2018 until the end, you go back to Kratos' home and they kind of set the table for what God of War Ragnarok is gonna bring with it. And I love the ending to God of War 2018 with that secret ending, quote-unquote secret ending where it just gives you the little bit of tease for Thor as well, which I thought was so well done. And finally, I do want to note that a release window has been confirmed. The game has been delayed from its initial 2021 window. It was supposed to come out this year. Obviously, there's a worldwide pandemic going on. It is now scheduled for 2022. Now, a little bit of speculation on my part, given the fact that Horizon is scheduled for the early portion of the year, generally speaking, Sony a lot of the times likes to do one big exclusive in the early portion of the year and then one big exclusive at the end of the year. So I could very well see God of War being a late uh, 2022 title. That makes all the sense in the world to me. Unfortunately, you don't know what the climate of things going on right now. You always have to take release windows, especially with a grain of salt. A delay can happen at any time and you know with Sony Santa Monica, they're going to try to deliver the best product possible. So if you see a delay for this game, I'm going to tell you guys right now, just prepare for it because with these studios they like to make every game immensely immensely high in quality so if you see a delay until 2023 Personally speaking, that would not be the most shocking thing in the world to me, but right now the game is tentatively, uh, tentatively scheduled for 2022. Hey, come May of 2022, that would be around four years to the release of God of War uh, 2018, and if we can get it at early 2022, that would be great as well, but a later release, in my opinion, makes more sense, but right now they are targeting a 2022 release window. And that is going to wrap up this one. Again, God of War Ragnarok is a game so many people are excited for, so many people are are looking forward to it's definitely going to be a game that yes while it's available on the playstation 4 and playstation 5 i truly do believe it's going to be a system seller for the ps5 just because people are going to want to play it in the premiere form possible and i would imagine 4k resolution 60 frames per second those things are going to be very very enticing as an addition to the God of War Ragnarok experience, hopefully the game does run well on the PS4 as well. And based on the visuals we're seeing out of the trailer, it is very reminiscent of God of War 2018. And much rather they take that approach instead of trying to cyberpunk themselves and the base console cannot run the game at all 14 frames per second. We're not trying to go that route. So I think this is... Uh, the best route to go given that they're trying to release the game as a cross-generation title. That's gonna do it for me. Let me know your anticipation level for God of War Ragnarok. Sound off in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.